Hello, and welcome to the College Guy Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Weiss, and today is our NBA edition, where I am joined by today's co-host, Wanley Ledger. What's up, Wanley? What's up, Ryan? How you doing, man? Pretty good, man. How you been? I've uh, been all right. My head's kind of spinning lately. It wasn't the best day for me, but don't want to get into it. Here to talk about a podcast and the NBA and hopefully get my mind off of all that bad stuff. Let's do it, man. <laughs> all right. So we, for all you guys watching this, we're filming this on, well, technically now it's Thursday, or, sorry, Wednesday morning, but Tuesday night kind of. What, and you're thinking to yourself, why in the hell are they filming a podcast before the trade deadline? Well, that's because we're busy people and we can't do one post deadline. So deal with it. <laughs> uh, but but we do have uh, there ha- were some trades happen. Uh, we'll talk about we'll get into a little bit about the All Star stuff. We'll touch on that lightly, lightly, but mostly we'll talk talk about talk about the upcoming trade deadline and some trades that have already gone down and what's likely to come down and other rumors. So uh, I guess we'll start with the All Star game, Wanley. What were your well, let's talk about the competition because the game, not so much. The West beats yeah. the the East 190, 196 points. I would like to see him get 200, but yeah. Cup last game, Russell Westbrook MVP, Paul George 41 points. That's about it. Uh, but my favorite part of All Star Weekend, what I look forward to, is the Saturday night, all those festivities, uh, the skills challenge, three point shootout, dunk contest. They got rid of the higher shooting stars, which I kind of liked, but I'm not missing it. But anyways, what you think of Saturday night? Which one was your favorite competition out of all of them? I really like the skills challenge. I really liked it. Yeah, when I, I kind of like I like this year it ended up being good. But last year when they did the, made the move to like the competition style, I hate it. I hate the yeah. short course. I don't like that it's competition or it's time based. I want the longer course back because like now the passing doesn't matter and all that stuff, but. But the bigs ended up being fun. I, I uh, Carl Anthony Towns ended up yeah. winning, and I was yeah. I actually got excited for it. Like he came down and hit that three. I was like, let's go, cat. Yeah. No, I like how like little effort Cousin gave during that yeah. competition. Cousins Davis were just walking down the court. I was like, I'm like yeah, you can do that when there's no timer. But it's yeah. like Cousin gave like, oh my gosh, it was ridiculous how little effort he really gave in that competition. Uh yeah did you, okay my biggest part with that was did you notice that the pass didn't really matter like if you yeah. got the first like you could I brought this up on Twitter and I saw some other people did too you could just legit throw the three balls away as fast as you could without even aiming yeah. and then yeah. just go through it the pass didn't have any repercussions I, yeah I realized that too because some guys I was like oh why not like not turn it on and then they were it was like oh yeah <laughs> after three you just go on and go uh basically go try to attempt the layup. Yeah, I know. Like three, three, and that's it. Like, you shoot. You're not gonna go until you hit one. Like that's the big thing. Like, did, yeah, wasn't on the old course. Was it like five and then go, or was it make one? It was. It was you had to make one and then go, right? Yeah, yeah, you had to make one. Yeah. And there was two. There was a bounce pass and a chest pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah, the old I, course. They just changed it up. Yeah, I I like the timing system better too. I don't because you have like some guys. I don't know. I'm not going to complain. It, was, it ended up being fun with the bigs versus the smalls. I picked CJ McCollum to win, but IT knocked him out. Although, IT, when he was on my team, the Suns couldn't beat out Patrick Beverly and get past him, and now he gets to the finals. So I was like, okay, <laughs> Suns can't win anything. And yeah. I thought McCollum had it for real. I, really, I thought he was going to win it. Yeah. Uh, so then, I, it was a really good Saturday night, all-star Saturday night. Uh, three point contest was fun. It oh, was yeah. my, it was literally my NBA finals this year because it's <laughs> Booker. I, I can't tell you how hyped I got for that and how much like zoned in I was. I've probably more zoned in for that game than any other game this year. Man, I, <laughs> I he got to the finals. And I, was, I was hoping he still had a chance, but not really. Uh, yeah, yeah. that would be a spot. It would have been awesome if Devin Booker would have beat out the Splash Brothers. Oh my but he god. Was, he was super nervous. You could see it on his first couple, of, like his first two reactions. I'm like, he had he had some bad misses. Yeah, they were really bad. But he ended up winning that uh, three-way shootout to get into the finals with Redick and Harden. Did you notice Harden on that shootout put his money balls in the last rack and only shot like three of them? <laughs> oh, I didn't even realize that. Like, yeah, that dude doesn't even like try to earn. Uh, I whatever. 
He doesn't try to earn anything. Like he's just he doesn't try to except for that, except for one year last year, and then all of a sudden he's like, yeah, I'm going back to being lazy. Yep. The Kevin Hart and Draymond Green thing, I found that hilarious. When I first started, I'm like, really, we're doing this instead of the shooting challenge, shooting yeah. stars. We couldn't have the shooting stars. But what made it worth it is that Kevin Hart beat Draymond Green. <laughs> Draymond only had 11, and Kevin hit 12, and he hit the last shot to make it 12. I thought that was hilarious. I know someone like you, who is not a Draymond Green fan at all, had to love it. Most overrated player in the NBA right now. Why is that? Dude, I mean, people, I read an article today. I think Pelton was trying to say that he's a top five player. You don't think he's a top five player? Oh, okay. Yeah, give him his own team. <laughs> that team's in the lottery. Uh, yeah, that seems, that seems definitely in the lottery. I think his offensive blank game is too overblown. I think he's a great def- defender, hustler, passer, all that crap. But glorified I, role player. Yeah, it was. People act like he's a great shooter. I wouldn't say Golden State has any great shooters besides Steph and Clay. The rest are all. I mean, of course, Barnes and. Barnes probably their third best shooter, but I'm not afraid of Barnes really. Barnes yeah. is only Barnes is only hitting those wide open shots because he has to put so much attention on Clay and Steph. Yeah. Finally, uh, if they get the rant, then it might be different. <laughs> it's like it's funny. Like, how, how does a guy go from like not even in a rotation to the next year he's a top ten player? Mark Jackson. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, uh, final thing of the night, which was amazing. The slam dunk competition, Verizon, I think it was. I don't know. They're not sponsoring us, so I don't give them any pub. But, yeah, uh, was real. Was amazing. Was definitely top three of all time, if not the best. Will Barton and Drummond weren't bad. They weren't great. Yeah. Uh, but, man, Aaron Gordon and Zach Levine put on a show, didn't they? These guys are freaks, man. That, uh, which one was your favorite dunk? It was definitely – when Gordon like basically like sat on the mascot's head. Yeah, like, where he brought the ball under his legs. The yeah. same one. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, that one was super impressive to me. But you know what I didn't know? The first, the, which the, the first, was it the first mascot dunk where he did like did the elbow thing? Oh, and, yeah. like, I didn't even know he did the elbow yeah. thing at first. I saw a replay. I was like, oh my god, what? Yeah. Like, I think like almost all of Gordon dunks like. They had all. They all had like rewatchability where you saw yeah. other stuff he did. Well, like the first, the the under the under the legs one. I thought at first he went through the legs. Yeah. And I saw the replay. I was like, oh my god, he sat on a chair. Man. And then the other mascot dunk. I, I thought it was a crappy camera angle. I thought he missed it at first, but yeah. Uh, I thought Gordon should have won. I'm not gonna argue here and be like Levine didn't deserve it, but I didn't like that Levine kept doing the. Nothing but the free throws, even though he went between his legs and stuff like that. Yeah. Thank you for not talking because I had to sneeze. So that's why I try to get to you. But yeah, talk about Levine. There's dunks. What do you know about it? Yeah, Levine, like, I don't know. Like, he's, I mean, he had impressive dunks and all, but like, I felt like they were pretty similar to what he did last year. Yeah, I felt like because he's Zach Levine. The judges gave him yeah. some stuff. Like, that first dunk in the finals, I did not think was a 50. Yeah. I thought it was, like, a 48 or 49. But I'm not going to complain because we got the that dunk off. Like, the yeah. three or four, I mean, yeah. the, the was dunk yeah. off. That's cool. It's, it's going to be – you would think Gordon does it again if he lost and wants to redo it. I would think Levine does it for a 30 in a row. I don't know. But it would be amazing if those guys do it again. I, didn't, I think this is going to be, like, Levine's thing. Yeah, because he, yeah, he's, he's not that great of a player. Yeah. Look <laughs> at what J.R. Green was. Cause remember, yeah. Green, same team, too. He did yeah. two years in a row where he was amazing at dunk contests. I don't think he won either year, though. I love that cupcake dunk, though. That cupcake dunk is maybe my favorite all-star oh, dunk of all time. Oh, yeah. And everyone's like, oh, no, the, no. Like, he went up and go, and yeah. then dunked it. I, I, that's maybe my favorite. That same contest. He took off his shoes and then they were windmill dunk on his socks on the floor. Oh, like, yeah. not, and like the crowd didn't react that well, but like, you know how hard it is to walk on yeah. with socks on, let alone run it and do a windmill dunk or whatever he did? My Dwight sticker dunk. 
Yeah, I was about to bring that up too. But that sticker dunk is amazing. Oh my god! Like he goes all the way up on the top of the backboard, and then slams it. Yeah. I think the next year he had the twelve foot rim dunk, which looked easy, but twelve feet. Holy crap! I I can dunk, (laughs) but I'm a rim grazer. I barely get it over the rim. I couldn't. I don't think I could maybe even touch the net on a twelve foot hoop. Oh yeah, that's the senior Ibaka was in dunk contest too. No, it wasn't. That was that was the next year. That was a really good. That's an underrated dunk contest because Ibaka yeah. did the free throw line, and we left before. That was the same thing. Remember when Ibaka like stuck that little toy animal up there? Yeah. Right with his teeth <laughs> and then dunked it. Yeah, I swear exactly what I was saying about. Yeah. Was, then, so he, that was a Blake. Uh, dunk. That was a Blake. Uh, dunk contest. I think so because it was Ibaka, DeRozan. Ibaka and DeRozan had some nice dunks and didn't make it to the finals. Oh. Okay. Who else was in that? Well, I've been Blake. Well, that was 2010 or 2011. Mm-hmm. I remember 2009. No. Uh, yeah, if it was 2010, then yeah, it was Blake's. Yeah, it was 2010. Because it was one year, I think 09. Yeah, I think it was 09 with the. With. Oh, heavy 2011. Blake missed his rookie year. Yeah, because uh, I remember one year it was. What year was that? Yeah, twenty. Uh, yeah, twenty ten. Twenty ten was uh that was horrible. That's the worst dunk contest I've ever seen. It was Shannon Brown, Gerald Wallace, uh, Nate Robinson, and Demar Derozan. Man, that one was tough to watch. I that one really that was horrible. Yeah, yeah that just sounds awful. The, the the actual game wasn't too bad. The All Star Game, yeah, I didn't watch. Yeah, yeah. The Flyers were playing the Rangers, so I was oh, busy. That was the one in Dallas, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I just remember seeing all those people, bro, in that stadium or arena. I'm like, yeah. wow. Well, WrestleMania is there this year, so they're going to put even more people in the seats. Oh, it was in Jerry Row, right? Yeah, WrestleMania is for 32 in, in like a couple weeks. No, I'm talking about the uh, All Star game in 2010. Yeah, I know, but WrestleMania 32 is also there. It's also <laughs> an ATD stadium. <laughs> is it an NBA or WWE podcast? Uh, I can make it an NHL podcast if you want. <laughs> Did you see the Flyers six three one tonight? Ghost Bear, I'm sorry, Shane Gossip Bear, Ghost Bear, uh, made his thirteen point or thirteen point game streak. I have that up, but whatever. You can make it hockey. You want to make it hockey? I can do that for you. Yeah, I don't follow it until the Stanley Cup. Yeah, and you think the NBA playoffs are better than the Stanley Cup playoffs, which is ridiculous. Well, actually. I watched one game last year, and I was like, man, you were pretty right. And it's like you watch the finals. It's like that every game, one of the first rounds like that. Yeah. I'm probably in like, I'll probably just catch the, way, like the conference finals. It's, well, hopefully the Flyers will be there. No, they won't be. They may not even play us. Although, I don't know, the, the Lightning won tonight? Well, wrong podcast. But if the Lightning lost tonight and the, and the Flyers won, that means the Flyers are only four points back in the playoffs. But, I mean, you're not. We keep up with some hockey capitals, man. That's pretty impressive what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, but I digress. We'll get back to the NBA and the topic on hand, and that would be the NBA tread, trade deadline. As we said, we're filming this on a Tuesday slash Wednesday morning, Tuesday night slash Wednesday morning. So we've only had two trades gone through today so far, a bunch of other rumors. So forgive us if you're listening to this after the deadline. We can't talk about those trades because we don't know what happened yet. So we had one trade go down today, and it was odd trade to say the least. They had Tobias Harris getting traded to Detroit for uh, Ersan Ilyasova and Brandon Jennings in a move that made almost zero sense for the Magic. I mean, Scott Skiles and Tobias Harris have had their problems in the past, and he's having a down year, but I think that may be due to Skiles and his system. Yeah. And they trade him for a point guard that is not going to resign with them. They have Alfred Payton and Old Depot. I mean, Old Depot's now a two, but still. They have Watson under contract. I guess they just really want that expiring deal. Ilya Silva's got two more years left on his deal. And it shows that Chang Fry is going to get traded, which we'll get into a little later. But how? what do you feel about this trade? I mean, the Magic, they didn't get no assets out of it. Yeah, not one draft pick, which I thought was odd, because it's not like, I mean, Brandon Jennings is a good player, but he's not part of their future, so it's like, I don't like, I'm not sure if they coveted him. 
not even a second round pick. Like, I, I don't. I, I really didn't understand that I, I trade at all. Yeah, it seems like Orlando is just trying to get like cap room for next yeah. year. For I don't Al Horford. I don't know who they're trying to get. Well, Ooh. they'll get. There's even more. They'll probably have even more cap room next year, which we'll get into again a little later. But how do you think this trade fits for Detroit and Tobias Harris? Uh, I, I, I think I think Harris is a solid player. You know, probably good, very good player. But I, I don't know how he really fits with Drummond. I I think it fits pretty well, like because you have I love Stan Van Gundy. I like his system, especially in today's NBA. He's got Andre Drummond, who's like that Dwight Howard type guy for him. Yeah, I think. I do think Tobias is more of a three. I think he's more of an attacker than a stand in the corner, stretch four, pick and roll guy. I don't yeah. think he's a good. I don't think he's gonna be a good pick and roll player at all. Yeah. But I think he can st- sit in the corner and hit a hit a corner three or a wing three for you. And he get he's, he's a he's got the body to be a rebounder. I think he can play well with Tobias. I don't think he's gonna be like Rashard Lewis and Dwight type. But I think yeah. I think he's better fit than you think he is. Wait, Tobias is like a really really like. Like wasn't really really bad tweeners. He just can't he can't defend threes at all. Yeah, he really can't. But he's only I mean, he's twenty three years really- old. He's twenty three years old. He's still young. There's a lot yeah. of time for him to. And yeah. the and the, the Pistons try to get him at the the free agency anyways during the off season. So now they actually got their guy for someone. I mean, Ilya. So I'm not a big Ilya So fan at all. Are you? No, I'm not. Yeah, so so they pretty much trade him for a guy who's not going to resign, and a player that me and you don't like, and obviously they don't cover that much either. If they're going to trade him away for Tobias Harris, I mean he's infinitely Tobias Harris is infinitely better, but he's better. Well, I mean Detroit, they they still Harris. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of get the same feeling. I don't know what Orlando is doing. Uh, yeah, Rob Henry, I don't know. Another what. another one like. What are you doing, Orlando? Is this trade in principle that may happen? Might happen. It may happen right now. We don't know yet. Uh, but it's probably gonna happen tomorrow if the Clippers don't find another offer. Is we don't know more details, but right now we have it would be Channing Fry for Lance Stevenson and maybe some other things. I don't know. And Roger Nahowski said that if the trade goes through, Lance would never even. Put on a magic uniform, they'd wave him immediately and buy him out. If Orlando makes that trade, oh my goodness! Like, you, Fry is valuable. You can't just trade this guy for for Lance. For yeah, guy I mean, in the yeah, I love Channing Fry. I mean, I love back, back to his Phoenix days. He's a deadly pick and roll player. He's a great locker room guy. I think the Suns really messed up not bringing him back when he opted out of that deal because he wanted to come back, and they—that's one of McDonough's biggest bundlers. Lunders is not bringing back Fry, but yeah, for the Clippers, if they can get him. Holy crap, that team! Did you Chris Paul and Channing Fry pick and roll, and you had DeAndre in the middle? Yeah, I mean, he might be their the best backup they've ever had in a while. Probably since. Oh, did Chris Kimmon ever back up while he was there, or, did, or was it him and Elton Brand starting? <laughs> I think Kevin came off the bench a couple of times. There, yeah. Time there. Yeah, that's. I don't know what Orlando's doing. I guess they want. I don't know. Like, there's not much on the market this year. Kevin Durant certainly is not coming to Orlando. Yeah. Uh, maybe you get Horford. You kind of have a. I'd say that we. I don't know because they want to because they want to get playing time for Aaron Gordon, who they were trying to make a stretch for, even though he can't shoot. Although yeah. this season he's shown he can't shoot a little bit. This rookie year he had a broken shot. I like Gordon. I want to see him his, him improve his shot. But he's improved so much since he left Arizona. He really has. Yeah, he, he yeah he has. So people are saying they should have took took uh, Noah Vonley over Aaron Gordon. People thought Vonley was going for. I was kind of I was a little surprised. I thought I thought they were going to go with eggs under that draft. I really did think. Did was Peyton that year? Yeah, Peyton was that year. Yeah. I thought yeah, they, they were going to go Exum and then Sarge. They did get Sarge. But yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, you're right. They you're traded right. him for Peyton. Yeah. Which I know you love Elvin Peyton. I do not. I think Sarge <laughs> will be 
I think Sarge would be a lot better. I think Sarge could be an all star. I don't see Peyton ever being an all star. Yeah, I'm a little if you honest on Peyton myself right now. Oh, are you? You used to be used to be Mr. Banging the table for Alfred Peyton. I mean, in this league right now, I mean, if, if you're especially if you're a point guard, and you can't shoot. It doesn't matter how how well you do everything else. If you can't shoot, it's really hard for you to crack the top ten. Yeah, I did my predictions this year. I think I put them on all NBA first or second team defense. I can't remember. And you were like, oh, you're finally turning around on Peyton. And I was like, nope, I just think he's a good defender. Yeah. Maybe like another, like, you know, Ricky Rubio or something like that. No, I don't. I, again, you know me. Not a big Rubio fan either. I like him. Not a huge fan like you are. I don't think he'll be that, that, as good as Rubio either. I I wouldn't want Peyton in my starting lineup. Wow, really? In a starter? No, I, I want him... Like sixth man at best. Who's better, Payton or Teague? Teague. Yeah, Teague by far. Teague by far. I yeah, heard they yeah. might they might be in on Teague. I'm, did I really hear that? I'm not sure, but I don't know. Orlando. Yeah, I heard they might be a little bit interested, but I mean, what team isn't interested? Uh it happened earlier. That, like a funny little bit side story. Do you know Ryan Lawrence at all? No. He's a beat writer for Philadelphia Phillies. Mm-hmm. Anyways, remember Camp Chancellor was holding out? Yeah. Michigan? And they were like, I was like, oh, the Giants are interested in trading for him, blah, 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 blah. And Ryan Lawrence, the joke, put it out. The Eagles are trading for Camp Chancellor. Putting it as a joke and saying like, this is going to be a joke. And then people for a little while was like, oh, this is real important. Is this serious? Are you going to try to get Camp Chancellor? And he's like, of course they want Camp Chancellor. You know, of course they want a top three safety in the NFL. You think this is? He did that today. No, he did that. He didn't do that today. I mean, he did that when Chance was holding out. Oh, okay. But I'm saying, like, because I couldn't remember if Magic wanted Jeff Teague or not. And, yeah. But, of course, they would take him if he's if Atlanta would offer him. I mean, I, Orlando has to break up that backcourt. You, you, you can't have Oladipo and Payne together. I don't know. Yeah, because they made uh, Oladipo. That's why they moved Oladipo to shooting guard, just because they wanted to make room for Peyton and some of them play together. And they moved Oladipo on the bench, right? Is Oladipo yeah. still off the bench? I think he's starting now over Fournier. No, because they have Fournier starting at the three. Oh, man. What's his Hozonia? He's going to be big. Hozonia is not getting any play at all. And the Rising Stars Challenge, I knew he was going to play well because Hazonia is made for All-Star games. Man. Oh, my God. He has it all, man. He really has it all. Yeah, I know you're a big Hazonia fan. I'm not, he's just a European J.R. Smith. I mean, he can go off, man. So if, Skiles, Smith. if Skiles get him together in like, man, he, he, could be, he could be really, really. Yeah, I do think he should get more playing time. I don't know why you're not playing the fifth pick in the draft more minutes. Yeah. The guy but, can shoot um, it. He's athletic. He can handle it. The other trade that went down today was a three-team trade involving Memphis, Miami, and Charlotte, where Memphis ended up getting Chris Anderson, a.k.a. Birdman, and P.J. Harrison, while Charlotte received Courtney Lee, and Miami got Brian Roberts. Obviously, I guess you could say Courtney Lee is the big name in this trade. Yeah. Why in the hell Memphis is trading their only shooter? I don't know why. They're getting P.J. Harrison, who can shoot the ball. Yeah. He doesn't give any minutes, but he's got some off-the-court issues. So why in the world, besides not being able to afford him in the offseason, are the Grizzlies trading their best shooter, their only shooter? I think they're, like, secretly in competition with the Kings to see, like, who can have the most dysfunctional locker room. Who are the craziest guys? Yeah, because I got Tony Allen, Zebo, Matt, freaking crazy Matt Barnes. Now they got, now they got Peter Harrison, Chalmers. <laughs> could you imagine Chalmers and Zebo? Could you imagine the fights they get into like on a plane while playing poker? Chalmers, they Chris Anderson now, like yeah, yeah. You thought Chalmers got yelled at when LeBron and Bosch were there? Holy crap! Oh my. God. <laughs> Plus, Marcus Saul is gone, like the guy who's calm everyone down. Oh my God, man. Tony Allen may knock out Chalmers. Oh man, they, they, the Kings, they're still number one, but man, Memphis is getting up there. I'm trying to figure out, because I know in the original report, 
by Woj that the uh, that Memphis was sending two second round picks to Charlotte as well. Oh no, Memphis, Charlotte was sending two second round picks to Memphis as well. Why can we do Miami or something? Yeah, but why why are Miami not Miami is get is make, trading Anderson who's got I think five million he's got these contracts they're trading for tax purposes yeah and they're not giving up anything besides him yeah I I, I thought I mean I don't think Miami's gonna make a big trade because you would need to include Anderson oh I think it is I think he, I think they are making a big trade they played Miami they played San Antonio in Miami. Shot fifty-seven percent and still lost by eighteen. I think Pat Riley is Pat Riley's getting up there. He wants another title before he kicks the bucket. I think a big move's coming. Whether it's Whiteside for Whiteside and Dang and Dragic for Dwight or something like that, or I could see I could see them doing like Dragic, Dragic, Whiteside, and Dang for Lawson, Howard, and Jones. Maybe I don't know. They, they, would, they would want a reason in return. They, no, because they won't play once in just, uh, Justice Winslow. Not once in Justice. Once in Justice is an NFL tackle. <laughs> but, but they need shooting. They really do need shooting. Like, they do. and I don't know. Could you get... I wouldn't say there's a marquee shooter out on the market. Is there? I mean, do you go get, like, Mirza or something like that? But... I mean, we talking about Ryan Anderson... I don't yeah, know. I don't think Miami really wants Ryan Anderson. Yeah, because they're gonna try. They're gonna try and make a run at the right, and I don't think that uh, Anderson. I like the right stuff like that. They would have to. Run. Yeah, yeah, I don't think. I think that Dwight for Whiteside deal is much more plausible. Yeah, but I mean, you think I mean, the salaries are nowhere close to each other. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That like, d- d- if Whiteside gets traded, Dang is in that deal no matter what. You might put more than just Dang. Is Dang only making more like ten million? Dang's making ten million. So you put Dang and Whiteside together, you have like eleven million. I believe they still have some trade exceptions. I think they have like three million trade exceptions. And check, I'll check now because they, unless it happened today, which I don't think it did, because they had the pro utero trade exception. No, hmm. so, Chalmers exception. Sorry, they got in the utero trade. Uh, I am checking now on their trade exceptions. They don't have two of their first round picks, so yeah, those two of those belong to Phoenix. I don't know. I'm sure they have some others that belong to some other teams. It is 17 and 19 or 19 and 21. I keep forgetting. They have they have about oh it, uh, it's 17 and 21. So, okay, uh, 17 is top 10 protected. 21 is unprotected. Oh okay. Yeah, so they got about two million tracks up from Chalmers. 1.7 for Zoran Dragic and 1.3 for Shabazz. So they got about $5 million to work with there. Yeah. And if, so if you put $16 million, uh, let's see, $16 million, I'm sure because they traded for Roberts that they'll get rid of Utero if they can. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah, Tyler Johnson is not out for, out for the year. So I'm assuming... Man, if they trade Dragic, they they'd want a point guard back now that Johnson's out for the year because they're trying yeah. to win a title. Man, I hope they trade. Unless you I get, know it. Huh? I just can't see a trade Dragic. Dragic would I give another point guard back? I really hope that this is super biased me right now. I hope <laughs> they trade for Dragic so much. I hope they really <laughs> hope they do, just so he can. Try again. Wee, wee, wee. A sports team lied to me. <laughs> you think they go after Conley? Like I do with like a Georgia Conley uh, deal? Uh, Conley will fit their offense a lot better. He does. He's, what, he's like two years younger. He, he, he doesn't really get usage rate. Conley is not younger than Dragic. Yeah, Conley, Conley's like 27, right? No, Conley's near 30. Conley might be 30. Or I think Conley's 28. Yeah, I, think yeah. Dragic, I think they're the same age. Dragic's going to be 30 this year. Or if he's not 30 yet. Mike Conley's 28. Oh, Mike Conley's 28? Yeah, Goran Dragic. So I was right about Conley. Goran Dragic is... 29, he's going to be 30 pretty soon. Man. 29. Yeah, he'll be 30 in May. Oh, yeah, man. He'll be 30 in May. Holy crap. 
Wow, that that really puts into perspective how long ago that Spurs third quarter was, where he had 23 points. Yeah. Wow, game three of the of the Western Conference semifinals, one of my more favorite games. Wow, holy crap, that was a long time ago. When did when did Colleen turn 28? Uh, close out the window. <laughs> uh. I currently turn 29 next season in October. Oh, okay. He's still pretty young. So he's still 28. He'll be 28 throughout the season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that, that, that's definitely an interesting trade they may go do. I don't – I'm not sure if it's going to happen, though. I don't think they're really going to – I don't know. If they trade dry, it's going to be for white. They, I don't know. That white side thing – White side's a predicament, man, because it's like predicament, because yeah. he doesn't have the contract. You don't. No one's. No one's gonna have his bird rights. It's not like he won't have them. No one will have them. And he's gonna get a max contract, and the Heat won't have room for it if they want to go after other people. I mean, if he they really want that guy. White side, no, no, they don't want White side at all. You keep. You hear this in the White side, and everyone's like, my White side wants his points. Like every time he makes a block, he puts his hand up. That's my point. Like, he, yeah. he, like, ran over Dwayne Ray one time to get, a, like, a put-back dunk or something. Like, he doesn't, he wants that max contract so bad he doesn't care about team success. Guess how many assists he has. I know he league. averages, like, half an assist per season or something like that. <laughs> Guess how many assists he had total for the year. This year, six. All right. You know, all right. A little bit more. <laughs> oh, 11. A little bit more. Fifteen. Exit right on the dot. After the third guess. <laughs> well, they, they played what, like, fifty games, and this guy only has fifteen assists. Yeah, the at all at the All Star break, he has fifteen assists. I mean, he, he's one of the worst passing bigs in the league. I don't think I don't think he's a bad passer. He just doesn't want to pass. Yeah. But he, he's like he's really really awkward like in the post. I still I don't I am uh, on record as a anti heat person, but not because of the big three. Yeah. Because of current players they employ, <laughs> not named Wade Bosch. <laughs> the dragon. And Whiteside, because Whiteside tackles Alex oh, Len. Yeah. After Len pushes him, and Len gets suspended, and Whiteside gets a fine. Because white side tackled, because white Len made white side tackle him. Oh man, that was a good week. He elbowed uh, Olenek. Yeah, that, oh, white side is a head case. Like he's <laughs> he really if, is. If Demarcus Cousins couldn't score, he'd be he'd be Hassan Whiteside. Oh man, he might be worse. He's not nearly as athletic. Yeah, I think. Blocker room wise, I think. He's Eddie Curry. No, I think Cousins is worse in a locker room with like coaches and stuff. Or yeah. White Side's worse with like. I don't know. They're both head cases. I'm on record saying Marcus Cousins is toxic and you can't with him. Yeah. Well, not on record. Now I'm on record saying it. <laughs> but in our past conversations, I have said it. Yeah, I know. All right. Uh, some other rumors. Uh, Dwight Howard, he's rumored to go a lot of places. Uh, Charlotte's one of them. I, Mark Stein, I believe, was saying that one of those ESPN guys, I'm sorry, I can't remember who right now, but I believe it was Stein, was saying that Charlotte and Houston are really discussing a Howard trade, but they're hung up over Charlotte's assets in order to get him. What do you think Charlotte would give up in order to get Dwight if they can? Even though Dwight is would not resign. I, I yeah. could not see Dwight signing in Charlotte. Yeah. I don't think Michael Jordan appeals to him as an owner. Yeah, that's the thing about it. I mean, you're, you're basically getting this guy for, what, two months? I mean, I, I guess you – I'm just trying to go straight up to wipe a big Al. Uh, I don't think that works out money-wise because Al's only making, like, 13 and a half, and Dwight's making 20, 22. So you still, there's a lot of money still there. Uh, yeah, looking at – maybe you give up Marvin Williams. Oh, uh, yeah, they would – Seven million. Clifford really likes him, man. They really like no, him. I know. He's kind of found a home, but I mean, he's making seven million dollars to get Dwight Howard. I trade him. Yeah. Uh, man, what else do you look at? 
I, I, I think Dwight wants to go to Atlanta, man. I think Dwight wants to go to Brooklyn. I really do. He, Atlanta, you think you want... No, he doesn't. He does not fit well at all in that Spurs food and hot food and hoser style. Dude, he really fits really well. Dude, him and Millsap are a perfect combo. Yeah, I would like that combo a lot, actually. They fit each other really, really well. Uh, yeah. Involves the Hawks. Uh, uh, Splitter's having surgery. He's, I don't yeah. I mean, he might not be at playing the rest of the year. I can't remember. Can you imagine Horford on Houston? No, I don't think that. I mean, that'd be really good for them, but I don't think that's the trade they make. Do you think – what would they do? Like, Howard – because you can't – you can't really add Howard with another player because he's got so much money. Yeah. Atlanta puts in Horford. They're going to have to throw in other players, like Hardaway maybe, but they just trade um, – Hardaway, Horford. Uh, Dwight's, got, Dwight's got one of those contracts where it's kind of hard to yeah. match up. Yeah, it is true. I I I don't I mean I don't really see Houston and Atlanta making a deal together. I could see it. I could see it. if they could get Horford because I feel like Horford resign yeah. in Houston. I think Miami's gonna try to go after Horford like really really bad. Horford, uh, uh, the team that you think would go after Horford's Boston. They reports that they're not gonna go after him, which I think Horford would be a great fit in Boston. I think Horford his best place will probably be Oklahoma, Phoenix. Oklahoma City. No, Phoenix. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, I'll I, trade Markeith, TJ Tucker for Al Horford and Kyle Corbett. Yeah, two months of Horford service between, before he goes to Oklahoma City. He's not going to Oklahoma. No one's signing Oklahoma City. Dude, if, he could, if there's a way for him to get there, he will go to He's, Oklahoma City. That's the point. What way do they have to get him there? They can do a trade. A sign and trade for what? You mean trade or sign and trade? Like, well, I mean, uh, they, they, they're going to try to trade for him. There's no, there's you no. You mean doubt. by by the not Thursday? It's not today or Thursday? Thursday, right? Yeah. Yeah, three Thursday. Five. I thought it was four. No, it's three. Hmm. Was it? It was four last year. I know for a fact it was four last year because my life came crashing down. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, which one we're talking about? Horford for oh okay, see. Yeah. What mm-hmm. are they gonna give up cancer? Like what? Horford's making twelve million right now. I so you have to make up twelve million there. They're not gonna give up Nick Collins and you're gonna put up throw in Novak. Like I'm assuming Atlanta's going to want assets back and they're not gonna want OKC's first round. Actually, yeah. if you think about that. Do you try to see if you can give something to OKC for like a 2019 or 2020 first round pick when there's a chance that Durant and Westbrook aren't there? Because yeah. like the Suns have an unprotected 2021 pick for Miami. Dwayne Wade's certainly not playing them. Yeah. Miami's kind of become a destination, but there's a lot of stuff that could happen in that many yeah. years. They could be winning 70 games a year, but they could also yeah. be winning 19 games a year. So I would think about offering something to get a future first round pick from OKC. Granted, I'm sure Sam Presti and all of them are smart enough to be like, uh, we're gonna protect this pick. Yeah. In that case I wouldn't want it. Yeah. I think Horford would love to play in Oklahoma City. Just good really, Billy really Donovan. No. I don't oh oh I forgot about that. I to, I totally I yeah. went over my head about the Horford Donovan connection. I was gonna say no one wants to play Oklahoma City. They want to put Durant and Westbrook. No one <laughs> wants to be in Oklahoma. <laughs> oh, I, I think Blake would love to go back to Oklahoma. Yeah, but that's a that's a Blake for Durant trade, though. It's not. They're not. What, what are you gonna do? Ibaka, Cancer, and Waiters for Blake? <laughs> Mm. Ooh, ooh, you know what? That what? is not too bad. That's not gonna happen, dude. It is, dude. If if you get Ibaka, cancer, and who else? Waiters and waiters mm-hmm. for Blake and maybe Lance. 
and Lance. Uh, I'm not sure if the salaries work out. I'm checking right now on the trade machine. I mean, come on. I mean, Clippers were ready. Were they were ready to trade Blake for Gallo, Jokic, and Fareed? Yeah, you would think. Uh, the reason I'd say the Nuggets didn't take that is because they don't really have any pieces right now to make a run. It's not like they're yeah. a superstar away. I mean, a couple of years of Moody develops, and maybe they yeah. have other guys there. See Blake for cancer, Avaca, and waiters. Holy crap! Thunder are gonna need to match a lot more salary than that. <laughs> How much do you throw, guys throw in Lance? If you throw in Lance and Blake for those three guys, it works out money wise. It works out. That's a good trade. I think that's a good trade. Do you think OKC would keep Lance? No way. I would keep Lance. I still think you can salvage Lance. Because, like, two years ago, Lance Lance had the most triple-doubles in the NBA. Since then, he's had two double-doubles, and those are both in 2014. Now, granted, the Suns won 48 games two years ago. but And now they have 14 at the All-Star break. But I still think Lance is an NBA player. I don't. He's got to be in the right situation. Playing with Chris Paul and all those guys are not the right situation. And. Two and Charlotte, when he's the main guy, or trying to be one of the main guys, is not the right situation. Two years ago, the guy was like all-star candidate. Yeah, it's weird how time goes by. A lot <laughs> of stuff can happen. Uh, yeah. Another report came out that do some rapid fire before we wrap this up. Uh, Suns want a first-round pick and a young player for Marquise Morris. Do you think that's too much? That's way too much. Uh. Unbiased Ryan says it is too much. <laughs> Biased Ryan says try to get two first round picks and a young player. Oh man. But, more, dude, the guy's like one of the five worst shooters right now in the league. And he, he shoved his teammate through a towel with his coach, like in the same season. His shooting's been much better ever since Earl Watson became head coach. Oh yeah. Earl and, Watson's the solution. No, Jeff, Jeff Hornacek being gone is a solution. <laughs> I'm not saying the Suns should keep him, or I, I, want, I would like to see them just to see if I mean, but the bygones be yeah. bygones if it grows up a little. Plus, I have a jersey. I would like to keep it. Uh, the Suns know that the only place they could trade him is uh, Detroit. But trade Marquis for Marcus, and I will <laughs> die happy at that moment. Oh, my gosh. It would be hilarious. Trade Marquis for Marcus and trade Gorn back to Phoenix. I wouldn't – if we won, like, 10 games the next five years, I wouldn't care that those two moments of my laughter would make it worth it. Well, oh, well worth it. That would be hilarious. Yeah. Uh, I do think the Suns will end up trading him. Probably not for as much as they want. I think that they get a young player would be like a Gary – not Gary Harris, but a Gary Harris-type player where it's like – Oh, he hasn't really worked out that much, but there's a little there. He's on. He's on like a CJ. Oh, oh, I would like to get. I don't know. I have to look at the Rockets' picks, but I would like to see if they get KJ McDaniels from the Rockets. Is it KJ McDaniels? Yeah. I mean, you get like KJ McDaniels and Terrence Jones from Marquise Morris. Okay, yeah, I can see. Yeah, you, yeah, if you include Terrence Jones, yeah, that would make me happy. Uh, another report, Bucks said they won't trade MCW. Good or bad move by them if they don't trade him? They won't trade him. That's exactly what the 76ers told him last year. Yeah, uh, you think that'd be a good or bad move by not trading him? It's a bad move. You gotta get rid of him. Yeah, I think you got your. I would at least move him to the bench. Try to get a point guard who can score with the ball. Yeah. Uh, you um, gotta get rid of him. You gotta get rid of him. Yeah. That, that came out a couple, that report came out a couple weeks ago. I don't think they're gonna do anything about it. Uh, the Knicks still covered Jeff Teague. Do you think they have anything to get him? I know they have no assets, but do they have... Again, you don't know if Atlanta's trying to blow it up and start over again, or if they're just trying to kind of reload on the run. They're third in the East. Like, come on. Are they third in the East? I thought Boston was still third in the East. Oh, yeah. yeah I get, they're fourth. I don't know. I'll check right now. Like, but, you, you're going to blow up your team? You're fourth in the East right now. But they've been shaky. Lately. They lost to the Suns. <laughs> Granted, it was a couple weeks ago, but they lost to the Suns on an Archie Goodwin buzzer beater. 
One of the most broken shots in the NBA. For me, my proposal, they should send the yeah, Utah Atlanta, back Atlanta, his Atlanta players. Right now. Send Millsap, Millsap, and Culver back to Utah. For... Oh, I haven't thought that out. No, <laughs> let's just make the trade and not <laughs> think of half the thing, which is kind of important. <laughs> But I, I I want an emphatic like you know core. You just want like the, or, yeah, yeah. I get you want the few good story all yeah all that crap. I want them to return back to Utah. Yeah, uh, I'm sure they don't want to return back to Utah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, what was looking to trade Kevin Martin? That seems like it's been out there for the past couple of years. Or it seems like Kevin Martin always gets traded. Is there yeah. to get anything really turn for him besides like second round picks maybe? Yeah, Martin. Yeah, how old is he now? Like 32, 33. Yeah, he's good up there. I mean, he, he he doesn't fit that team anymore. They're just trying to just give their young guys all the playing time. Yeah, he's one of those weird players where he's seemingly like never fit with a team, but he's not a bad player at all. He's not. I, I, it's it's odd. He's not a bad player at all. He could really. I mean, can you, can you imagine him on the Clippers? That would that would be a nice trade for him. I mean, yeah. he's not as good a shot creator as Jamal Crawford, but he's a better player than Jamal Crawford. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he he really is. You know, he, I mean, he's a better defender than Jamal Crawford too. Okay, the only guy who's worse at defending than Jamal Crawford is Joe Green. <laughs> oh, really? Even Le- I think Levine may be worse than uh, Crawford. No, I don't think. They're worse than Green or worse than Crawford. No, I think it's Tony Parker who's worse. No, Par- Parker was a good defender. He's just fine. No one's worse than J.R. Green. I will go to my yeah. grave saying no one's worse defender than J.R. Green. <laughs> I remember when Miami fans got the him, they're like, oh, we got this great shooter. But I'm like, okay, streaky shooter and can't defend what <laughs> Yeah, J.R. Green. He lost him that uh, Clippers game pretty much when he's trying to defend Chris Paul. Like, why well, do you have J.R. Green guarding Chris Paul? He has all the tools to be a great defender. Except just, for except for the tip of his one finger, I can't remember. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's amazing how he dunks. Like it, it really is amazing how he dunks. Oh, so, well, yeah, talk about the dunk contest. Yeah. All right. So yeah, the trade deadline's coming up in about in twenty four a little over twenty four hours. Uh so Maybe it's hopefully it's as busy as last year's because I like movement on my trade deadline. I don't like when guys stay with the same team. I like same thing as free agency. I get mad when guys resign. I mean, last year was awesome, man. But man, I, it took like an hour and a half to figure out what was going on in the league. Yeah, no, it was weird. Like Isaiah Thomas was traded four times. <laughs> uh, so like anything? Half the, half the league's point guards got traded that day. All right. Uh, before we go, any last trade that you? That you will say is going to happen? Chris Paul for Kyrie Irving. Going to happen. <laughs> Dwight's definitely leaving. Dwight's definitely getting traded. Where would you say? Uh, I think he's going to Atlanta. Atlanta? Yeah. yeah I, was about, I was about to say, I think Horford's getting traded. I think Horford's a big blockbuster move this year. Where do you think he's going? Oklahoma? No, I think I could see like you say, uh, Dwight for Dwight for Horford somehow. If Houston gets him, I think they get they get better, man. Yeah, they put Capella in at center. They, I don't think they'd really miss a beat. I think they probably get better. And for the first time in Horford's career, he's playing in his natural position. Power forward. Yeah, he hasn't played power forward since he played with Joakim Noah. Yeah, I know, right? Man, but that would be. Yeah. If Gasol didn't get injured, can you imagine if if Memphis would have found a way to get Horford? That would have been Memphis almost had Kevin Love over they picked OJ Mayo though. They actually oh, picked yeah. Kevin Love and then traded yeah, for OJ yeah. Mayo. Yeah, maybe. Wait, but I mean Zebo was gone there anyways, right? Yeah, so they, they wouldn't they, they, they would never have Zebo. Zebo yeah. arguably the best player in franchise history. But yeah. anyway, so the trade deadline is about it's a, like I said before, about 24 hours. I'm not going to do the math. It's too late for that. It's too late at night for that. All right. That will about do it for the College Guys Sports Podcast, NBA edition. If you like the podcast, if you didn't like it, comment down below. Let us know what, what we did that you liked, what we didn't like. Let us know how we can improve in the future. Follow us on Facebook or like us on Facebook. 
Follow us on Twitter, subscribe on YouTube. Uh, I'm your host, Ryan Weiss, for your, my co-host, Ryan Ledger. Thank you for listening to the College Guys Sports Podcast, and we'll see you next time. See you guys later.